All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, it has been a long time. Uh, I myself, I've had things going on uh, with work and just, you know, doing stuff, doing stuff with the snakes and, and other stuff. Uh, so I've been really, really busy. Uh, I think most everybody knows that uh, Chip, he's been injured. Uh, he got in a bad accident, so he's had all kinds of stuff going to the doctors and dealing with stuff. We're definitely going to try to get better at uh, being, you know, I know we've said this several times, but definitely going to work on uh, getting better at making videos and putting them out, putting out more content and whatnot. Uh, tonight, um, we have a guest on, uh, Scott Hobson. Um, I think most people in the in the retic community knows uh, who he is. He's been around for a long time. Uh, tonight, we pretty much just want to, what I want to, what we want to do tonight is kind of, he, he is basically a keeper. He is a true keeper. Uh, he, he doesn't really care about uh, breeding or, or anything like that. It's the love of the animals and kind of uh, we'll talk and discuss kind of like, uh, perspectives or different perspectives of uh, what are we looking at? What do we see in these animals uh, as a keeper versus, you know, a keeper slash breeder and that kind of thing. So uh, anyhow, I think everybody knows I'm James. Chip, I'm, what's up, buddy? I'm Chip. Uh, uh, I just wanted to also apologize real quick. Uh, I'm kind of out of it, I've had some adverse reactions to the medications they've been giving me. Uh, I've been sick for a couple of days and having to deal with that. And I apologize for also not being on and all the medical issues. But uh, really great guest Scott here has uh, got a lot of valuable insight. And so, Scott, this is Scott Hobson. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you started, what you do. Um, perception of everything that's going on just give us some background info cool yeah happy to be here thanks guys for having me i really do appreciate it. it's an honor to be amongst uh people like you really so uh yeah i grew up in a small town uh in central illinois uh actually not maybe 30 miles away from where chip lived for a while uh, he went to high school a small town called delavan illinois i literally grew up on the edge of town where across the street was a cornfield. And, you know, as a little kid in a small farm town, you know, you ain't got amusement parks or skate parks or, you know, anything like that. You just, you didn't have much. So, you know, the country was your playground. And, you know, we would, uh, you know, as kids, we would uh, go along the fence lines of the fields, you know, and uh, there was like uh, about a, on the other side of the field where I grew up, there was a crick, crick, creek, and uh, a retention pond and all that stuff, or a, a, I can't remember what they call it, but uh, kind of a big pond. And, you know, we had beavers, foxes, you know, all kinds of turtles. And, you know, that's what we did. You know, we went hunting for critters, so to speak. You know, so it started out very, very young. You know, like corn snakes, rat snakes, bull snakes, fox snakes, gophers, not really gophers, but, you know, that's more uh, west than here. But, uh yeah, that's how it all started. You know, then I was 16. Yeah, I think it was uh, like two weeks after my 16th birthday, I got my first little uh, ball python. You know, everything back then was, you know, wild caught, had all the freaking ticks and all that stuff. And the fun stuff, it didn't eat for shit, you know. But uh, then I think I was 18 when I got my first Burmese python. It was about a 10 footer. It was, it was a big snake. And then a year after that, I think I was 18. Yeah. I got my first retic and I just always fell in love with retic. I just think they're stunningly beautiful animals. I think uh, to me personally, I mean, I love the big mainlands, you know, I've got a big mainland myself. Um, I think their length and weight, you know, their girth and, you know, just their size in general is almost kind of a like a detriment you know what i mean it's like when you get them nice and small they're so beautiful and everything but yeah they get big you know but you know i just fell in love with uh i really fell in love with the iridescence and uh like me and chip were talking the other night it's like uh 
You know, those old school wild caught retics were just something else. You know what I mean? With all the little heads and all that stuff. They were fun, you know, and, and I, I still love them today. I just, I've owned many, many species of animals, and I just, they were my first love. They really were. There, there's got to be more. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, and then, uh, you know, I, uh, I did it for years until I was 25 years old, and uh, again, I, I, I lived down you know, on the boonies, and then I decided to move to Chicago, and I gave it up for, God, what, eight years? And it was literally, I was in a little pet store, like a pet smart or whatever those little shit shithole stores are. Yeah, I picked up, uh, just randomly picked up a boa. I was like, you know what, I want to get back into this. And then within a year, I started keeping retics again. I got my, my big mainland, who's going to be 11 this year. So, and I just slowly got back into it, you know. And that's the thing is like I'm uh, I'm a keeper. I'm not a breeder. I have no desire to do any breeding ever. I really don't. And I've had some really nice snakes that I could, you know, made some beautiful animals or whatever. But uh, I just admire them. I just I love them. Yeah. You know? I just a lot of people like a lot of these like we were talking about, you know, the scene today and everything is like all these young kids, they they just want to nosedive right in, you know, and it's like they think they can get 10, 15 snakes in a year. I remember a couple of years ago, Chip, uh, there was a guy that uh, had like 15 retics and he lived in a one bedroom apartment. And it's like, you're a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? It's not going to yep. happen, you know, and that's where I always say, like, with with the newcomers and just. Do you want to take that leap into owning a reticulated <clears throat> python, the longest species of snake in the world? You know, you have to be mature. You have to be knowledgeable. You know, it's like, and they just want to dive right in and buy, you know, five, ten snakes a year. And then a year later, you see them on Craigslist or the classified ads on Facebook and all that, and or the mails, you know, and all that stuff, but what I always like to say with, with newcomers, I don't even say newbies or anything like that because that's stupid and that's immature. Um, start out slow. Get one reticulated python, own that one retic for at least a year and see if you like it or not. You know what I mean? It's, and that's another thing is you have to plan ahead. You get a baby, that snake could potentially be 8, 10 feet long in a year. You know? it's you Once you get a rack, you need to start getting your visions or APs or freedom breeders, whatever you whatever you prefer. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, these, these new kids, they just want to dive right in. Why do you think that is, Scott? What is your opinion on why do you think that's happened? Uh, a number of things. Uh, a lot of overbreeding. A lot of breeding stuff that really doesn't even need to be bred. Like, you know, when people do the POS heads and stuff like that, it's like, why? You know what I mean? But just a lot of overbreeding and a lot of people, this is more so is, you know, you go to the expos or whatever and you see these kids, you know, they're at a vendor and they're selling retics. And it's like, oh, it's a $300 snake. Or, you know, it's like a normal could be what, you know, 125 bucks, you know, if that or more depending on if, there's, if it's a head or whatever. And these breeders will downright sell them to a kid. You know? And that's bullshit. And I don't like that. That's the stuff, the kind of scene that I don't care for. So just so uh, some more background on Scott, you know, he's been around a long time. Uh, he currently runs Reticulated Pythons Worldwide, the second largest free tick site uh on facebook uh right. also tell us a little bit about your background on what kind of work you do uh and what what your uh i guess vocation is and oh, yeah. going a little uh, bit about that that was the thing is that that's why i moved to chicago was you know i grew up in you know the sticks and then you know i started getting the machining when i was what uh, 1920 
And by 21, uh, I became a uh, uh, programmer for CNC uh, lathes and stuff like that. And uh, and that was when I got into automotive, like Caterpillar, uh, just you know all the major uh, car manufacturers of the U.S. And uh, then I moved to Chicago and I got into aerospace. So I started working with all the fighter jets, uh, A1 Abrams tanks, stuff like that, uh, Sikorsky helicopters, you know, the Osprey helicopter slash jet, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, and then uh, I uh, got a call out of nowhere, and I to this day I really don't know how they got my resume, but they somehow got online. That was Fermilab. Fermi Lab National Laboratory. Uh, they do all big physics and stuff like that. They had the world's largest uh, particle accelerator. You know, they smash subatomic particles and stuff like that and get your research. And they've got, you know, so many records of discoveries with physics. And uh, I worked there for years. And then uh, when they retired the large Tevatron Collider, that was then the second largest because they opened a new larger 16 mile in circumference particle accelerator in uh, on the border of France and, and uh, Switzerland. So they retired our Tevatron. So the funding got cut and everything like that. And then I went back to aerospace. So it's currently what I do now. So, you know, you're very detail oriented and you research constantly because that's just part of your job and, and vocation. I bring that up simply because um, that's how a lot of people should go about with everything. Yes. And we brought you on because you aren't a quote unquote breeder. You love well, these animals. You focus yeah. on retics. You have a few other species. But we want to get your perception on what these animals mean to you, what type of care you think they need, um, what what the hobby has become since what you've seen it, and uh, where you think it's going to go. So if you just want to kind of elaborate on those kind of things, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we're all basically about the same age. You know, we're, we're, we're in our 40s, mid-40s, what, whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's come a long way since we were young kids. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, like keeping them in fish tanks and, you know, the hot rocks and stuff like that, you know, and the heat lamp and shit like that. And, you know, and that was the thing is like when I got out and I got back in, when I moved up to Chicago and everything, it's like everything had been turned around. I mean, like with all the different types of caging and everything and stuff like that. It's so much easier, you know, it's, you know, you've got an array of different kinds of cages and thermostats and whatnot and everything. Back then there wasn't, you know, it's like, you know, like with my thermostats, I use Inkbird, which are basically hydroponic and micro brewing thermostats that can just hold a higher wattage and all that stuff. Gavin Bow actually turned me on to those. But yeah, I mean, I love them. I, I, like I said, they're my first love. I've owned rocks, berms, you know, all of them, everything, but basically like a scrub and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, you just, you got to learn to realize what kind of snake these are because each species acts really dramatically, dramatically different. If you ask me, like if you, even from a berm to a rock python, which are very similar. But, like, I, I don't know if uh, James owns any rocks or whatever. But, you know, it's like they, they, they act goofy. You know, they, they, they stiffen up and all that stuff. I think retics, for the most part, when you work with them really well, they're pretty chill. They're pretty relaxed animals compared to, you know, again, like a rock or, or whatever. You know, but I, I just, I love them. You know, and I think the care, it's, and that's another thing. There's so many different options today. You can do belly heat. You can do, you know, radiant heat panels and stuff like that, you know, with different kind of type of caging and everything, different sizes. And, 
And that's another thing is like there it comes into question like with care and all that stuff. Like, who is that one guy a week or two ago? You know, boasted this big wall, you know, big wall cage, and it was beautiful. Don't get me. I mean, it was like zoo zoo like conditions. You know what I mean? Um, they don't need it. You know, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mental stimulants or whatever. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of these animals, you know, they live in burrows and trees and stuff like that. They're what they call an agoraphobic animal. You know, they don't like open spaces. Yeah, and that's another thing that people realize, you know, that snake will tell you if it's okay or not, if it's eating, if it's drinking, if it's, you know, defecating, shedding, and all that stuff. You know, you have to learn to talk, you know, or not talk, but, you know, read your animals. But, uh, you know, it's kind of forgot where I was going to go here, but, uh, you know, it's, they don't like open spaces. You know, you got to figure an animal that has no appendages, you know, would you be out frolicking, you know, in the middle of the open or whatever, you know, where rat or, uh, you know, birds of prey come down and get you, you know, whatever, any multitude of animal that's going to get you. No, they like hiding. They like to be, you know, secure. So, so I think that's well, another misconception. Go ahead. Well, also, I mean, you're right to a point, but being that you got the largest snake in the world, not every snake's going to get big. Your average monster retic in the United States today is between 14 and 16 foot. But right. you have those crazy genetics that'll get out there that, you know, 17, 18, 19 foot snakes. You're not going to mm -hmm. keep that animal in even a six or an eight foot vi vision cage. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, that, that's absolutely cruel right. and absolutely asinine because that snake is so large, it still has to move around. And exactly. You, not you can have its a whole shit every time it goes to the bathroom. Right. And so, like, that, I saw the guy that posted that, and it's a great idea. Uh, for large snakes and everything else for them to move around, but um, you know these he he attacked somebody where they were living in the country that these animals were from. That are That's it's what one of the, me off. yeah yeah and but a lot of people in this hobby I've noticed that everybody says six foot vision cage you're set for life. Get a six thirty two you don't need anything else. Right. And I've seen multiple breeders keeping 17, 18 foot animals in six foot vision cages and the thing's taken up almost two thirds of the cage and it's not moving. Right. Yep. And they're not handling their animals, their baby machines. Yeah. They don't, yeah. they don't bring the animal out unless they're cleaning the cage. Yep. Exactly. And there's a difference between that's, you know, you bring up a good point. It's like, I've seen people who are, you know, like me, and they don't handle their animals. It's like, well, I guess that's a personal preference, but, you know, it's like, I love holding, you know, getting my snakes out, you know, taking pictures of them, you know, and I mean, interacting with them. You know, they're amazing animals. You know, I just keep them in a freaking tub <clears throat> or whatever and never fucking, you know, hold them. You know, they're beautiful animals. I think that's the difference between keepers and and breeders and breeders. Um, yeah. Most most breeders, I don't say most because then it sounds like I'm talking about everybody. But you know, you start accumulating x amount of animals because you have these projects, things that you want to do, things you want to create, whatever the case may right. be, and then you start producing. <clears throat> then you have holdbacks that you keep for future projects or whatever it is that you're trying to make personally, you know? Um, so you, you end up with all these animals, you know, um, it, it gets to the point where, you know, the only handling that you, that, that the animals get really is uh, interaction is when you're feeding and that's not a whole lot of interaction or maintenance. Um, yeah, exactly. Maintenance. And it's usually it's either it's from, 
uh, the cage they have to clean to another cage or to a tub and then back to that cage. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, because of all the animals, um, it's just, you know, on the most part, there's not enough time in a day to sit there and interact Exactly. With that, with with the animals as a breed, you know, so you're just whipping them in, whipping them out, you know. It's but yeah, and that's another thing is people, you know, as a keeper, you know, people don't realize really how big some of these can get. You know, like uh, the Amel I have. I mean, she weighs more than my English Mastiff by four pounds. (laughs) You know. And they're a long, dead weight snake. You know, it's like, I'm 47. I'm getting arthritis in my hands and stuff like that. Getting those big boys and big girls out, you know, it, it's it's a challenge. And especially, again, as a keeper, um, that's the importance of working with the animal. You know, if you're not a breeder, you really shouldn't have to deal with a pissed off animal. For the most part, you know, depending on, you know, how much, again, you know, some snakes are just assholes. But when you work with them enough and enough and enough, you know, it's a lot more easier to get those animals out of those cages and back in than a pissed off retic. You know what I mean? Oh, interaction is key with these animals. They're smarter yeah. than people think. Yeah. And like one of my big snakes, you know, I'm not, if that snake was ever to be aggressive, which it never has in all the years I've owned it, but if it ever was had, I'm not moving that snake. I'm not getting that snake. It, it, right. it will will overpower me tenfold. Yeah. And the thing about it is the more you interact with the animal, the more it recognizes you. I, I, I have another animal. I'm not going to go into specifics with it, but it is literally probably the smartest snake period snake not python not anything snake i've ever owned and it's almost like she recognizes me and i don't have to worry about going into the enclosure with a hook i don't have to worry about anything that that snake is interacting with me because i am spending one-on-one time with it i'm not trying to yank it out of the cage I'm not trying to, you know, force it to do what it wants. Right. And I can open an enclosure with a lot of my animals, just gently steer the head towards the enclosure, and the snake will go back in. Right. Yeah. I yeah. watch people all the time fighting animals, and it's ridiculous <laughs> because they don't care. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, like with that big Amel, I mean, she, she's huge. I don't even open the glass. And it's like I when I got her from Eric Navarro, um, he did such an excellent job raising this animal. And he goes, uh, I remember the first time I saw her, um, I was actually picking up a cage from him. And like I said, I'm not into the albinos and all that stuff, but she's a big majestic snake, you know. And he goes, oh yeah, he goes, she just pissed and. Uh, he just goes and starts taking the glass out, you know, and the snake's just like, Hey, what's up? You know, you know, and it's just like, you just bring a tub over to the edge of the cage, just guide her head in and she'll go right down in. No worries. No humping or fucking pounding sand or anything like that. You just guide their head where they want to, you know, where you want them to go. And they do, you know, is when you get them back in, you just kind of, you know, Tap them, you know, do your tap training and everything. I mean, I do the tapping when I take the glass out. But, uh, you know, when I had that Jampaya, that thing, you walk in the room, and it was just like, just waiting. You know what I mean? Be fucking jams. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, that was the only snake I really, really didn't like. And it was Chip's fault. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> hey, real quick. Uh, yeah. we have somebody asking, uh, Scott, what's the name of your Facebook group again? Uh, reticulated pythons worldwide. Um, it's in the last year or two, uh, about, I'd say a year and a half. It's, it's kind of really died out. It's still got like over, I think 9,000 members, but, uh, me and the guy who 
I run it with uh, Kevin Van Steenis out of uh, the Netherlands. I think he's gotten pretty much out of it, and I know he took over, I think, his father's business. So he's been really busy, and I think he works more with uh, elapids and stuff like that nowadays. So I haven't talked to Kevin in, I think it was a year last April. So I, I'd love to hear from him. I'd love to, you know, kind of revamp the page up. If you guys want to help, you know, you're more than welcome. But, yeah, in the last, I'd say, six months to a year, it's really kind of calmed down. So Yeah, I was an admin of that group for a while, but the, the one of the owners of the group was a dick and pissed me off. <laughs> God, dang, here we go. But, no uh, – no, it, it, it was, it's a good group. It's it's they've got a lot of good good members. I mean, it's more uh, European based. Um, but yeah, Asia. I'm sorry. European and Asian. And Asian. That's what I was gonna say. In Asia, yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of Americans over there and Canadians and everything like that. But uh, yeah, so hopefully, you know, we we'll, we'll might try to uh, kind of revamp the site up again or the group. What's your uh, <clears throat> just being a keeper, not breeding and whatnot, and just but what's your perspective in our little community, our hobby? Like, what's your perspective? I mean, what's your ideas uh, of where we started to where we are now? Um, what do you think the future is, you know, is going to be? Well, the future is uh kind of very cloudful you know and cloudy and all that stuff but uh again you know like from where it's started you know late 70s early 80s when you know it really started you know, and bob clark and all that stuff and but uh where it is now where it is now is uh all bullshit aside there's a lot of fucking stupid people in our community straight up just have no fucking business owning not even a reticulated python or even a boa fucking constrictor you know what i mean and that's the thing is where when you talk about the policing and everything i i think that's what really needs to really be honed because there are a lot of stupid shit you guys see it i see it others see it and just uh, i don't know i just wish there was Again, like you said, more policing. You know, when you see a dipshit, call that dipshit out. You know what I mean? And like, like with that dipshit, Rob Clark and all that stuff, the bullshit he pulled, you know, to do that shit to Phil Goss, the head of US Arc is some supreme dipshittery. You know what I mean? So that's my thoughts with, you know, people like him, you know. I think people, we do. We need to call each other out and hold ourselves to a higher standard. And if you see something wrong, say something, you know. And at the same time, that's where education comes along with, okay, over in the States, you see something stupid, call them out. But when you see cages in Malaysia and Indonesia, Asia in itself, you know, these are third world countries. You know what I mean? That snake in that cage, you're going, oh, that's so horrible. It was probably found 50 feet away in their backyard. You know what I mean? So that's where, you know, education really goes a long bit. And it's, uh, and that's another tough one is education is you can try to help somebody. But if they're a dipshit, they're going to go, fuck you. I'm going to do what I want. You know what I mean? And that's another thing we see a lot of. So, well, that's my background is education, and that's that's the the biggest issue I see is people people rather would have Facebook likes than yes. have quality of life for their animals and right. have world education. I yep. get the whole "I'm proud to be an American" stuff, but we didn't invent all these things. We didn't discover all this stuff. No, we're yeah. we're coming in on it, and we're trying to make we're we're supposed to be the better people and trying to make things better. Right, but 
right now we're our own worst enemy with everything that's going on and nobody's opening their eyes to it. It is status quo that unless somebody is poked and prodded, they sit back there and say, look at my new morph. Give me likes. Right. Not, Hey, maybe we should scale some stuff back. Focus on education, focus on proper keeping, focus on the stuff. So we don't lose our rights. Yeah. It's, it's all about money. And mm-hmm. once again, I don't think there's anything wrong with breeding. And and I don't. Uh, I think it should be done, uh, you know, re- be respectful to the animals and, and, and whatnot and, and, and whatnot. But <laughs> there's a lot of people in this hobby – in our little world that they're it's all about the money with them and and the they, likes and they're that. allowing the money to, to turn them into something that they that they shouldn't be two faced they crawfish a lot it's mm. um well i mean take it let's take it to the highest level you know Kevin, or not Kevin, um, uh, Brewer. You know, it's like with everything that's going on right now, the last thing you want to do is be posting these freaking huge pied retics that are pissed off. He's like, oh, yeah, it just bit me in the ass. It's like that's not helping. What, what you're talking about, you know, where the future lies. You know, it's education, you know. And don't get me wrong. There's nothing. Jay Brewer is a smart guy. He he's he's smart at marketing and stuff like that. Everybody know who's behind prehistoric pets, and it's not Jay. You know, he's basically the salesman for the thing. You know, and like I just saw the other day, he pulled out this massive pie. You know, and his jaws are wide open, just ready to clip him. You know, it's like, why are you doing this right now? If that's your if the, if that's your livelihood, why would you be so goddamn stupid and be posting stupid shit like this? So That's team. like we said, you know, people are watching us and they use that stuff as ammunition against ourselves. I don't well, know. Did you guys topic. see those videos? I, 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 that's something. <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't have an issue with Jay. I really don't. I really I, don't. I, 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 I uh, uh, they're entertaining, but at the same time, it's like you can't be posting stuff where you say you get bit in the ass. And it's just like, um, but that's my opinion. You can ask for it, you know, and I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disagreeing. He's got the largest reptile platform outside of Brian Bartek. And there's been yep. videos that I agree and disagree with the, the mentality of getting somebody to watch. And I right. understand, I understand that I, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Um, but let's go with some numbers since you're a numbers guy. And what do you think about this angle? We'll steer it away from that for a second. Let's take the top three retic groups and call that the entire retic enthusiast population. So you're looking at right around 25 to 27,000 members collectively. So right. that's worldwide. Now let's cut that in half. Let's say 10, 12,000 people in America. Those they live in, in the USA, not Canada, not Mexico, just USA. Let's say let's say around twelve thousand people. Cut out all the states where retics are illegal to be kept, and let's say that there is not all those people keep retics and are just enthusiasts. So let's cut that in half. Let's say six thousand people are retic keepers by breed or keep. There's 385 million people in the United States of America. 6,000 of those keep, breed, and house the retics. Right. How many retic breeders do we need that are producing, you know, 8, 10, 12 clutches a year? Right. How many retic clutches do we need produced every single year? Where right. are all those animals going? Because there's yeah. this thing where it comes up where, oh, we can call animals and feed them to other animals, but that's not going to happen because people want their money. Right. So where, are all these animal, up, yeah. where are all these animals going? Let's go from there. What is your opinion on that? 
they're probably going in the garbage because half the shit gets fucking lot sold and whatever and gets sold at a you know an expo or online and all that stuff and people just don't care yeah you really do you see us you know retics in in the scene you know over 10 years old anymore you know just i don't know you know shitty genetics i mean i know that's part of it but you know a lot of it's just shitty fucking owners that people that just really don't know what they're doing. And there's also a lot of breeders that are willing to sell and they just don't care either. You know, as again, where we just, uh, you know, and there's a lot of good breeders and there's a lot of shitty breeders, you know, and it's, it's just, it's really hard, but yeah, I think a lot, I mean, I remember there was a issue uh, was maybe about a month ago. A girl bought a male retic. Uh, if you guys remember that, and again, I'm not going to drop names or anything, but I know who sold that girl that retic. You know, and people were giving her shit and all that stuff. It's like, well, you got to also give shit to the fucking breeder. It's like, you know, if you've got other species of snakes that might give off a pheromone that might react, you know, a, to a retic. That I don't know. I know, like with you know, rocks and ferns, you know. Because of the, the hybrids, you know, in a year you could have a nine foot pissed off snake, you know, that just wants to eat your face off, you know. So, again, that's where it comes to just education, really. I hate to say it, but. And that's another thing, like when it comes down, like with the use arc and all that stuff and the grandfathering or whatever. I remember back in the day, you know, there was discussion. It's like, well. If we did regular, you know, if we were re regulated by the government, if you had to have a license or insurance on these animals, it would definitely call a lot of the scene. It really would. You know, if you got to spend, I think, you know, like today, like uh, they're saying in North Carolina, you know, it, for certain species, you know, it'd be like $100 a hundred dollars an animal per year to just have a permit. A lot of people ain't going to do that. They're going to say, Fuck that, you know, and that does where it would, you know, uh, call a lot of the dipshits, you know, because a lot of dipshits just don't have fucking money, you know, to spend on an animal. So, you know, but I'm not, I don't want the government in my fucking snake room. You know what I mean? I do not want, to, and that's where coming back to again, like what you're wanting to push is use USR. The only one we got right now, and I like Phil. I think Phil's a great guy. I think he's a very smart guy. And again, it just comes back to just we got to be educating people more. So, James, I've got a bunch of stuff, but if you got something to interject before I go on another little thing, go ahead. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm right there. Uh, you know, uh, the whole policing and whatnot, but when it comes right down to it, it's, uh, if not, every, you know, everybody's not on the same page because as of now it's, you know, money is, is, uh, is all about the money. So I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not wanting to turn this, I, I wasn't trying to turn this into, uh, tonight's video in, 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 in the, in, into this, but uh, you know, that's, it, it is, it is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> our community, they're out to get us. And, uh, when, when you have people like Kevin, which this is not, I'm not talking shit about Kevin. I, I think the world of Kevin, I, I, uh, um, you know, uh, he makes a video, then everybody starts talking about us art that's irritating it's uh extremely irritating because why is it only important when he makes a video right um i don't there's a lot of people that that are breeding and when you're breeding you you have the capability to help your community, right? Uh, because you're one, you're breeding, you're 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 producing all these animals, 
uh, you're able to do something like what Aubrey did. Uh, you know, Aubrey's an outstanding guy. Uh, I think the world of that man. Uh, he didn't have to do that, and he did it with some really nice animals. Right. Uh, and he could have easily sold them and probably got, you know, he could have got possibly more money, you know, and pocketed it, you know, and, but he right. didn't. Right. So it's, I promise you the day that I start producing here again, that's what I'm going to be doing. Write it down, take a picture, record it, whatever. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, if I'm capable of doing that, then I'm capable of taking some of those animals and making money and donating it to uh, help not just my right, but everybody else's right to keep these animals. Right. Uh, it's. <clears throat> and it that's the thing. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to say this real quick. Like, I'm not concerned well, I mean, I am. I mean, everybody should uh, be have the right to own these animals. Like, the real reason why like, I joined the U.S. Arc, I talked with Aubrey on the phone for about, I'd say, an hour and a half or so. And it's like, the way he described it, you know, he made sense. It's like, you know, nobody's got anything else. He goes, and I told him, I said, you know what, I'm going to do this just for the breeders. You know, and again, it's like, I'm, it, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, jumping fences or anything like that, but you know, we wouldn't have that hobby if it weren't for the breeders. You know what I mean? So that's the reason why I joined U.S. Arc. I'm sorry. Um, no, I mean, they're, they're, we appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, everybody, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I think that, you know, whether you have, uh, no matter what, what it is that you, you're keeping, you should join U.S. Arc. Um, yeah. And I wish there was a way that we could not just make our little world stronger, but the whole reptile community stronger become, you know, we don't all have to like each other, but we're right. all fighting for the same shit. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and we're all doing the same shit. All, all we're doing, we're clean shit. Yeah. That's what we do. It's just some more shit's bigger than others. Right. Um, but we're all doing the same thing. Um, so I wish there was a way that we could all come together and everything. Uh, I really didn't want to turn this tonight's video into this shit, but you know, it's, it's one of those things, like I said, uh, money changes people and the perception is that I'm going to, I will post something and I will ask people and I will talk about us arc. So people think I'm a good guy. So people think that I'm really about it. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that will do that. And they're really only about the money. Right. And it's make every single dollar I possibly can before they take the animals away. Right. And, and I, I hope I'm wrong, but that's how it comes across. Like I said, I, I took when, once uh, all this shit started and we started pushing us arc really, really hard a few months ago, I started to, I really, I took a lot of this stuff to heart when we started talking about how you know, and agreeing, we were agreeing that we should police each other and all this other shit. And that's just people running their fucking mouth and, and, and saying things that they think everybody wants to hear. Cause when right. I fucking police people, I'm a bad guy. Right. You know, um, yep. don't, don't ban anybody who spent money with me. Right. Exactly. You know, don't, don't, don't do that. Um, I know what you're talking about right now. Yep. So where, where's that, your, that was a bullshit thing. Yeah. Well, my whole I, thing you, about it is this, is that as a business owner, not if you're a business owner, no matter what it is, you want people to do business with you. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but it's also how you run your business, how well you run your business and how well your name is. And how you promote yourself depends on how much business you're going to get, right? Right. So if somebody's doing something fucked up and funny and you don't longer do any business with them, is that ruining your business? Is that going to ruin your fucking business? Probably not. You're so scared that they're going to say something bad about you? Right. 
You know what I mean? Like, I, eh, whatever, whatever. Um, this is important to me. Uh, these animals are important to me. So being able to keep them, being able to me personally breed them, um, educate people, do things with them, uh, uh, share my passion. Uh, all this stuff is extremely important to me. I can't speak for everybody else. It's definitely more than just money. I mean, by all means, why wouldn't I not want to try to do something with, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not against right. making a dollar. I don't think anybody no. is. Uh, Costs a lot of money to do it, you know? It's, it's uh, I don't know, it's really important to me, and I really, really enjoy the hobby. I really, really enjoy the majority of the people that's in it. In fact, the people that are irritating the fuck out of me right now, I get along with them. You know what I mean? Right. And my whole thing about it is, is that I just want us to, I want us to be stronger. I want us to be a, uh, you know, I want us to be better. I mean, it's just like if I'm doing something fucked up and funny and you see it, uh, say something. I'll, right. you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get all defensive and shit unless it's fucked up. You know, if, well, I'm the, if you I know, can do something better then I need to do it better. You know, that brings up a good point, too. Like, you know, doing silly shit or fucked up shit or whatever. You know, that's 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 an opinion. Um, and that's where, you know, these assholes that are after us have taken so much fucking fun out of the whole thing. Where a lot of people are walking on eggshells. You know, it's like, don't post feed pics. You know, don't post, you know, bite pics or whatever. <clears throat> And I, I do understand both sides of the coin. It's like, well, should we not say, oh, these animals don't eat other animals or, you know, does nobody get bit? You know what I mean? It's like it, it is a part of the territory, but it's all on how you display. And it's like, you know, hey, I got bit. You know, this is a bad one, you know. What did I do wrong? Or some dipshit, you know, like that catfish coolie where he stuck his arm in a freaking uh, Burmese. Yeah, Burmese python. And it's just like, that's not the way to do it. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I see it's like the policing, it has taken a lot of fun of like, you know, hey, I just can't show my, you know, my nice pretty snake in a freaking S pattern, you know, with his jaws. You know, it's like getting ready to tag you or whatever. So it is goofy, you know what I mean? But, you know, as a whole, we should be more responsible and not post it, I guess. I don't know. So, again, it's, it, it, it's kind of a weird thing. So Chip looks like he's about ready to explode. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of going along the same things you said, only a little different. So my new thing that I'm going to be starting as soon as I'm better is something that nobody does. Uh, the Europeans do it. I've got, you know, you got Stephen Dawson, you got a few people in Asia, yeah. you got a few, a uh, few people that run zoos over there now. Um, there's no negative imagery, which is, I think, kind of good. There's no positive either. You've got exactly. all these breeders <laughs> posting, look at my animal and give me likes. You don't have interaction videos. You don't right. have handling videos. You don't have any of this stuff to show because that's good ammunition. If you really think about it, you got a bunch of people out here that own these big snakes and all the media is showing you is the negative crap from these morons down in Florida catching wild Burmese pythons or attack videos that are going viral or Jay Brewer or whatever. Jay does great handling videos, but he doesn't, he does. he's not really, he's not really doing it in a way other than shock value. Exactly. Um, and that's what I but, don't like. But showing off handling pictures with your animals and interacting with family members in a proper way is, proper is definite. Way. That's a big yeah, thing. In a proper way. None of this throwing the snakes out or dumping a snake in a baby crib or whatever, but handling pics and videos of how good these animals are as pets to show mm -hmm. that 
don't take these away from us, the responsible people. We exactly. genuinely care about these animals. These are really good animals to have, but we don't have that. We right. have consistent posts of people throwing animals in fish tanks, not interacting with them, getting taking cool professional pictures, not even handling to get likes or this is for sale or anything right. else like that. I mean, it, look what Megan Kelly does. She goes up to her anacondas that her dog tame and does she great so much videos. Yeah. yeah, but they're great interaction videos yeah. to show what these animals can do because anacondas for years had this negative stigma. Yep. And right now, the outside world, nobody, nobody, what's driving me absolutely up the wall, and I'll bring up Mr. Rob to this, <laughs> is he's flat out attacked me multiple times without saying my name and James. He still doesn't get what he did wrong. He thinks we're jealous of him. Right. And it's <laughs> asinine. I don't give a shit about what you keep or what you breed. I truly don't. Right. I have more animals than you. I have rarer animals than you. I don't care. I'm not a breeder. Right. Um, your actions speak louder than words and your perception that I can do whatever the fuck I want right now. And there's going to be no consequences because I'm a real American and I speak what on my mind. <laughs> no, the majority of the country thinks these animals in a negative way, right? We need to show proper interaction, proper care, well, that's proper the thing, like everything. <clears throat> Yeah, like Megan Kelly, you know, like she just posted a video a day or two where, you know, it shows her working with a baby anaconda, you know, social. I, want, I, don't, I don't like to use the word socialize so much, but, you know, rubbing its head, you know, making it where it's not gonna, it's head shy and all that stuff. She really does. I mean, she's unprecedented in the anaconda community. She really is. Nobody's got big snakes like her that are that tame. I mean, I'm sure there are, but she does take a lot of time and effort to work with her animals. Yeah. But a lot of people fuck with her and shit on her and stuff like that. Because all this crap, and that that's my point to all this. You've got mm -hmm. all these big name breeders. And I'm not talking about the big three, Kevin, Bob, and Jay. Okay. I'm talking about the social media big breeders right? that aren't doing any of that. Right. A and we need to put a positive light. Stop trying to be a breeder. Stop trying to be like these guys. Yeah. Enjoy your animals. Interact with the animals. Show the world that these are not bad animals. Yeah. You know, you know, I can... What? Or go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I know I've said this several times, but uh, we got so much stuff that we're trying to do that I just, I haven't, as soon as we're totally done with everything that we're going to do here, uh, you know, when it comes to my snake, snake room and whatnot, I will be doing, cause that's part of what I want to do is I want to make more videos, uh, you know, working with the animals and whatnot. Uh, I just, it's not, it's not ready yet. Uh, you know, uh, I know I said that's what I'm going to do so many times and just every time it's the, I get the snake building to a point where uh, I think everything is going like we start doing something else and it's just, you know, it'll happen though. So well, Scott, let, let's hear more from you. We're going off on a tangent. What, what are your big reasons for not breeding and what are your true reasons for keeping these snakes right now so give us a, give us some insight on that and go kind of in depth is he coming off weird yeah your audio is messed up is it i'm sorry yeah because usually you're the one when i'm watching your videos it gets goofy. So, how about now? Now? Shit. I don't know. 
I know we've been having uh, router troubles today, so am That's I still sounding like shit? If your you audio, see. your audio is toast, dude. Like we can hear you, but it sounds like you're in a tunnel and talking through a a walkie-talkie. Fucking Yankees. Now you have no sound whatsoever. God damn it, Scott! I, we've God. lost him completely. God damn it, shit! I told you we shouldn't have put this fucker on the goddamn podcast. Look at him. God damn it. Have hey. Rose walk behind you or something. Shit. Unmute it. Did you, Oh, you're on mute, buddy. Unmute your fucking... Yes, you are. It's showing that you're muted. Look at the screen. Your Bitch. microphone is muted. Yeah. Yeah, you still sound like shit? Yeah, you still sound like crap, but you're unmuted. So, well, I don't want to carry on if I don't sound worthy, so I apologize for this little uh, technical inconvenience. Can you hear anything? Son of a bitch. Sorry, guys. What's mm -mm -mm. Are you low on battery or something? No, I'm at 76% right now. See what happens? God damn it. Sorry, well, we're, we're coming up on uh, an hour anyway, so, I mean, we can do this another time, but yeah, I don't want to keep doing this if you guys can't hear me or I sound like shit, so I do apologize. I didn't do anything, literally. Yeah. It just started doing this, so. Uh, well, let's try one more thing. Leave the podcast, come exit back out, in. yeah, shut everything down and come back in. Don't do drugs, kitties. Hey, I'm completely frozen, buddy. What the shit? Are you there? Any better? Better. Oh, it's yeah, good. lots better. This is good. Yeah, I, I really did not do a, I did not touch a button. And, it just started, and that's why I started seeing the mic, so... So I apologize. Okay, so so anyway, what are your views on breeding these retics in the hobby today, and what what do you view yourself as a keeper and your responsibilities? Go into depth on that. Um, like I said, I have no, I I I really never had any plans to breed or anything like that. Uh, again, it's almost a turnoff when I see people. You know, like kids, you know, within a year, like we talked earlier, you know, or they, they buy like 15, 20 retics, think they can be a breeder, you know, within a couple of years and make money and all that stuff. That stuff really turned me off. And again, it's like a couple of times I've, I've, I've pondered it, but really no, you know, because it's a lot of money that I don't have and or time where it's like you have to buy, you know, a baby rack and all the food and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. And, but, uh, no, I mean, it's just uh, – I've just always loved keeping these animals. I really have. Like I said, we were talking the other day about, you know, like the wild types just don't look like they used to, you know. And I remember as, you know, when I was in my early 20s, late teens, you know, they were just they're beautiful animals. And I have absolutely no desire to breed, and I just wish people would quit looking at these animals as a commodity more of an animal you know what i mean again like i said you know as a breed or as a keeper you don't need to have 20 animals i mean if you want to have 20 animals go for it you know as long as you take care of them properly and give them all the right nutrients and husbandry everything like that hey go for it you know me within the last couple of years you know i dropped half of my collection just because you know a lot of people don't realize you know, especially coming into it, that these animals take a lot of cleaning, a lot of time. They really do. You know, I know guys, you know, they get off work. They'll spend, you know, four or five hours, you know, just cleaning cages right after work. You know, and people don't really think about that. They're like, oh, wow, I want this cool fucking pit bull of a snake. You know what I mean? 
but they don't see the background that goes into it. So, you know, I just, I love them. I really do. They're my favorite snake. I don't want it anymore. I'm not getting it anymore. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're my main love, you know? Give us some in-depth thoughts of what you see the hobby is today and uh, what you think uh, we should do to try and improve things or not improve things. Well, you know, there's always room for improvement. Um, again, you know, it just, it really comes down to education and, you know, social media is another thing. You know, it's just, you know, that's another thing is with social media, it's like somebody can ask a question. It's almost scary in certain places to ask a question. You know what I mean? Well, you should have fucking known this before. Well, sometimes shit happens. Yeah, there are stupid questions that are just blatantly stupid. But like, you know, a couple months ago, I had a snake. You know, I, I saw some bubbles and I haven't had to deal with an RI in probably what, four or five years. I think it was actually when I first moved into this house. Um, what I what did I do? I went to you guys. I went to both of you guys. And I said, hey, you know, I'm getting bubbles. You know, I've been out. You know, I haven't had to deal with it. You know, is there anything different I need to do? You know, and you both gave me the same advice. And turned out the snake was wonderful. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. Like, we need to not be so quick to demonize at the same time. We need to police ourselves. That is very important. But it's also important not when to just, I mean, that mob mentality of like, you know, when somebody's asking an honest question, stupid question, go get them. You know what I mean? But when somebody's asking an honest question and you can see they're not at, say, our level, Feed them all the fucking information you can, you know, because I remember like, like me and talk, me and Chip, I think me and you have talked about it, too. It's like, you know, back in the day, we didn't have the fucking Internet, you know, where we lived, where me and Chip lived. He was a little closer to Bloomington and Springfield. I had to drive 54 miles to Springfield to go to a library, you know what I mean? That had anything to do with reptiles or I'd have to drive 35 miles to Bloomington, Illinois. 25 miles to Peoria, Illinois. That was our research. You know what I mean? Now you have all this level of fucking information right at your fingertips. Then at the same time, you have a plethora of disinformation. And that's where, you know, we really got to police ourselves of when you see bullshit information being given, cut that right out immediately. And not try to be a dick, but, you know, people are dicks because that's a whole other thing, trolling and people just being assholes on the fucking Internet, you know, when somebody's trying to ask for help, you know, and that's where, you know, we got to police and try not to demonize them and try to give them as much education as possible, you know. I just want <clears throat> to feed off of, you know, somebody's giving bad information. You need to say something. Right. You know, this is this is the problem where you only give shit to the people that give off bad information if they're not spending money with you. Right. I know where you're going. Yep. If motherfuckers are spending money with, with, with you, then you, you turn your head. Right. You know, don't 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 upset the it but everybody agrees that we should police each other and that we need to be better. And everything like that, but I don't know, a bunch of fucking hypocrites. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that that's kind of like me and Scott do this every now and again, but uh, I'm more known for it. And I genuinely, I'll just re reiterate with this, which I've said it before. People think I'm I'm making stupid accusations or trying to show off or trying to discount somebody. But when somebody posts a snake and they're claiming it to be 18 to 20 foot long, <laughs> and it's really, it's, I do not come from a bad place. I try to explain that. I, I get really sick of it, but people truly don't know what an 18 to 20 foot retic looks like. And in the day and age, we're being watched constantly. 
And it's just like the famous line in Jaws. Someone says Barracuda. Everybody's like, huh, what? Right. Someone says shark. You got a panic on your hands. When right. you tell somebody you have a 20-foot snake, people believe you because they don't know their sizes and they freak out and everything looks down. Oh my God, this guy's got a 20-foot snake. You hear 20 foot or 18 foot. That sends like alarm bells to people. Yes. So it, you probably don't know your sizes because most people that keep retics, a majority, do have never seen an 18-foot snake. They have no idea yep. how big it is. Yep. It is a drastic difference from a 17-foot snake. It's a foot difference, yes, but the body and, composition that, is that limit, massive. They really start to change. Yeah, they really. I mean, like you said, I mean, prime example. Look at Steve Dawson in the UK. That man has some true freaking monsters. Yeah. And they're all great snakes, you know? But, like, that's a good point you bring up. It's because that's something that's always going to be around. Um, a couple of weeks ago, there, or I think about a week ago, some guy said, you know, he had an 18-foot snake. It's the same guy. That, yeah, He's he been posting it constantly. It's the yeah. same thing constantly. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's the thing is, like I said, I said, you know, that's a beautiful snake, buddy. You know, I wasn't like, you know, insulting him and fucking going after his throat saying, you're fucking stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. I said, you know, hey, man, that's a beautiful animal. But, you know, that's not even close to an 18 foot animal, you know, but hey, it's beautiful. And I tell you what, the guy, a lot of people were saying the same thing. But I will say he, he was a younger kid. He's probably in his early 20s, whatever. You know, he's an adult. I think he took it in great stride. Oh, you didn't? Oh, I'm, I, must, I must have missed something or something. No, he does this constantly. Does he really? He did, he, yeah, he, he genuinely thinks that that thing's 18 foot no matter what. Right. He, right. Uh, that's Again, why kind I of it's where people don't listen. You know, yeah. that's where you try and, to fucking educate them, and they're just like, Dur. Anywhere else on the planet but our, our groups, a 14-foot snake is massive oh yeah but <laughs> it's the claim you know yeah. i thought me and steven follow these big snakes all over the world yeah. and they're genuinely rare they yeah. are people think and you keep you project a 20 18 20 foot snake constantly <laughs> that's what the public's going to perceive and you don't want that because these are rare 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 animals yeah, And the genetics aren't in every snake to hit that. It doesn't matter how much you feed it. Yeah, It's genetics. And if the genetics aren't there, <laughs> it's not going to hit there. And so it's all about perception and education. Enjoy your 14-foot animal. There's nothing wrong okay. with that. Nothing wrong. And that's another thing is uh, you bring up a really great point of there's kind of like this, uh, like, Oh, well, it's SD or it's dwarf. Oh, so it's going to be five, six feet long. Oh, it's mainland. Oh, so it's automatically going to be a 21 foot animal. You know what I mean? There's really, people have a hard time. It's not like that. You know what I mean? Like I had a super jam. That thing was all almost 13 feet long. You know, I've got the original albino jam that's 19 foot too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, they, they hear, Super dwarf or dwarf or mainland, you know, each side of the spectrum, you know, either it's going to be a four foot animal or it's going to be a 21 foot animal. And I want that big 21 foot animal. On, and it's maybe a 15 foot animal, you know. But so any, any layman looks at a 14, 15 foot animal, they're going to think it's 20 foot long. Yeah. 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 Like, they, the, the thing is like when people give out that misinformation, it's like, oh, this is an 18 foot snake when it's like maybe a 14 foot snake. And other people with two eyeballs in their head can go, you know, that's not an 18 foot animal. He's giving disinformation, so to speak. You know what I mean? And that makes that person kind of look dumb. Yeah, I don't want to use that that term, but. Again, like somebody, you know, like in law enforcement, I was like, well, this guy's a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Or not law enforcement, but like, you know, whatever. So, yeah, it, it, it's goofy. You know, that, that is really goofy. We see that a lot, you know, in all the groups. 
you know, and you try to be nice, you know, say, hey, you know, it's a nice animal, but it's not, you know, anywhere close to 18 feet, you know? So what are you going to do? You know, that's where we got to try to be cool and, again, police ourselves and try not to be complete dickheads, but some people do deserve it. Yeah, and I'm at the, you know, I'm at the point where, I don't know, I just, I, I'm on the fence to where, like, you know, you want, you want to bring in new people because you want to educate people. You want to educate people, not just, but reptiles in general, because there's a fear of reptiles, not just, it's not just snakes and whatnot. A natural fear, yeah. Right, so. You want to educate people and you want to bring people into the community and whatnot, into the hobby, because, you know, what, you know, but literally it's dealing with large constrictors that definitely not for everybody. Like, I I feel like everybody should be able to own one, but not everybody should own one. Yeah. And, and, uh, they do it for the wrong reason. I, I, I used to just let things go. Like, I'm all about being a dick now. I mean, I really am. I, I'm all about being a dick. And uh, because I don't think everybody should be in our world. No, you know I, I mean, that I, sounds I, wrong. Said that. I know so that sounds Everybody should have the right to own one, but 99% or 97% of the people who own retics have no fucking business owning them. And they do it for all the wrong reasons. Same people that want a fucking badass, you know, the baddest pit bull on the fucking block or a Rottweiler, you know, and just, it's sad. You know, they're they're doing it for all the wrong reasons and not for the love of the actual animal. You know, they do it for shock value or attention or likes, like you said, you know, and it's sad or for money, you know. What the fuck is wrong with just having a beautiful animal and just, Enjoying it, you know what I mean. <clears throat> nothing more, it, nothing less. It's it's like I compare to it. If if you have a fifteen foot snake and you keep it in a four foot enclosure because that's all you can afford and people are yeah. okay with that. Yeah. If, what if you reverse that? Took your family dog or cat, stuck it in a tiny ass kennel and kept it there its whole entire life. But it, it's fine. It looks good. Yeah. It's not okay. No, if you no. do not have the means to own an animal, yeah. you're not going to own it. And most people don't. Most people do not no. have the budget to own these animals. No, they really don't. I mean, and that's the thing. It's <clears throat> especially now, uh, like, you know, vision is the kind of standard right now. Um, you look at the price of visions now. That's it's mind boggling. They what tripled in price, you know? Yeah, and everybody yeah. knows that. So, yeah, you're not going to go buy, get a good deal on a used one. You can't go get a you know a pallet full of them now. You know that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, and that's another thing is used ones. You know they're like oh it's a thousand dollars, know, it's fifteen hundred dollars brand new. Well, this one's ten years old. I can send you know sell it for a thousand. Yeah, and they're always in demand, and people are gonna going to buy them. You know, and, and then and there's that, the point where the- really like what you're saying. Is like, you know, when you get a baby retic, it's it's going to be need to be in a vision or you know a, a front sliding cage door within a year. You know what I mean? And for the price of a one cage, you know, it's it's not cheap. You know. And then what if you do have the ones that have the genetics to get over 15 foot long? What are you yeah. going to do then? Because there's no cage company on the planet that's going to be able yeah. to house that. They don't make you cages big enough. You got to do a custom. You yeah, know? walk-in viv or something because that's what I'm doing. I mean, I've got I've got monster snakes here now that yeah, it, 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 it's something that you got to do. So do you have the space for that then? Yeah. Because your one-bedroom apartment ain't going to cut it because you ain't going to be <laughs> able to afford the heating bill to heat an enclosure yep. of that size and then supply the amount of food that that animal needs and the yep. bedding changes and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. That was on uh reticulated pythons worldwide. I don't know if he was over on the nation, but he was over there and this was going back three, four years ago. But yeah, this guy was trying to be a, a wheeler dealer flipper or whatever, trying to be the next greatest, you know, you, you see these people that, get into it and they stockpile and they stockpile and they stockpile, you know, 
I don't know if they got a fucking inheritance or, you know, a bonus or whatever. You start seeing these people stockpiling. You're like, it's like, oh, yeah, I live in a one bedroom apartment. It's like, you're a fucking retard. You know what I mean? Straight up. You're a fucking retard. Do you think your landlord's going to go for that? You know, 15, 20 snakes in a one bedroom apartment. You don't think that's going to fucking smell. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it just, it, but it's just. But then it's again, crazy. but then again, you, those idiots in those one bedroom apartments with 15, 20 snakes, where did they get them from? The breeders that are posting right. all the time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree. For, I'd say 95% of the time, it is that, or like uh, some freaking, you know, again, classic story, you know, somebody gets a freaking reticulated python. One year later, it's a male or whatever, and it's, it's you know, it's nasty or, or whatever. You know, they have a baby now. You know, they don't want a snake, you know, which I totally understand. You know, they're not prepared. You know, and they, again, they do it for the wrong reasons. If you really want, as a keeper, you know, we, we got to kind of wrap this up because I got some steaks to grill. Um, but, like, as a keeper, get one animal. Get one female retic as a baby. Work with it for one year. You know what I mean? See if you like that or not. You know, because these animals, they, people just don't understand how fast they grow or have the potential to grow with whatever genetics. So, but, yeah, it's just crazy. You know, it's just like you said, you know, it's – the breeders have to be more responsible too. Everybody has to be more responsible. Hey, retic for everybody, man. Hey, I, like fucking said, retics I, I, for I, I, everybody. We have the right to we keep just, them. I, yeah. We just gotta. We just gotta do better. Yeah, you know, it's just and that's where we gotta discuss more and just have more of a concrete go-to way to just. You know, weed out all the dipshits. Cause they're, they're Real easy like, way. It's like back in the day. Go find a friend of yours. Tell them to join a retic group. And tell them to throw $10,000 in cash and a picture. Say, I've got this much money. Who's got snakes for me? And watch how many oh, reputable yeah. breeders will jump on that person yep. immediately, never do a background check, and sell them anything they want when they see that cash. It, I couldn't I, – me and uh, Brandon Orr used to freaking go on uh, other freaking websites just for fun and say, yeah, you know, I got an inheritance check for $20,000. $20, you know, I'm, I'm ready to freaking go. And you could sit there and watch your inbox go – you know, it's, it's, you're exactly right on that one. Yep. Well, fellas, Scott's got uh steaks to cook and shit. Woo so, um, so, hey, I appreciate you guys having me on here. Uh, we appreciate you coming on, bud. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Are you guys, uh, I know, I don't know if Chip's going to make it, but have you made a decision on Tinley yet? Or Schomburg, I should say now. Uh, I will find out when I go back to work. Uh, I think I have honestly. I think I have several people that are going to be on vac in, on vacation. So I don't know if I'm able to take off. Yeah. If you can, you uh, can. Can you can? But yeah. if I can't, this uh, in June. What is the next one? In September. October. I, October, October, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think whatever. Maybe Later on this year, it. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make plans for that one. Definitely. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna find out when I go back to work. Uh, tomorrow, I'm just going in for a little bit, then I'm coming back home. Uh, shut up, Chip. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so the following day, when I'm actually at work, I'm gonna look at it and everything, and make sure I put in time for if I can't take pick off the, for next month for uh, the one in October, September, October, whenever the fuck it is. Cool. Yeah, we'll go out and have some pizza, dude. Yes. So, well, anyhow, thanks. Every, thank you, bud. Uh, thanks, Chip. Thank uh, once again, please support US ARC. Uh, support if you're not a member, ARC. become a member. Uh, donate when you can. If you're at a show and US ARC's there, buy a sticker, buy a shirt. 
something like that. Also, yep. uh, thanks everybody who's supporting the channel, uh, supporting the Facebook page. Please subscribe, hit the like button, comment. Uh, let us know what you want us to talk about. Uh, let us know uh, who you want to see on the show um, and all that other good stuff. So, all right, you? guys. Well, no, thank you very much again. It was an honor to have you guys. I, I absolutely love you too. Like I said, you're my two go to guys, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Man. All right. All take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.